Hello, my name is Brandon Davies. I'm a criminal defense lawyer based out of Overland Park, Kansas. In this video, I'm talking about some common questions associated with a, being charged with a crime and some things that a person might have questions about when placed on bond after they've been charged with the crime. And specifically in this video, we're going to talk about an ETG test. An ETG test is a relatively new way of testing to see if someone has consumed alcohol. Um, before we talk specifically about the ETG, let me talk about why it even exists. First of all, alcohol only stays in your system for a short period of time. So when a person is placed on bond, um, they have a pending criminal case, or a person has been convicted of a crime and they are restricted from using alcohol, it's pretty difficult to determine, because alcohol has a short self life in your body, if that person has actually used alcohol. Up until the ETG test was brought forth and used here in Kansas, a lot of people that were placed on bond or were convicted of a crime and prohibited from using alcohol took advantage of that short shelf life that alcohol has in your body. So to combat this, the ETG was introduced here. People think that it is an alcohol test, that it detects alcohol in your body. And that's just simply not what it does. ETG is essentially a chemical that your own body produces when you ingest alcohol. So here's how it works. Alcohol as a chemical is a poison. If you ingest alcohol and your body can't dispel that alcohol, you will die. So your body has a, a self-regulating or self-producing chemical to essentially help you digest and process alcohol. That's called ETG. Um, ETG um, is produced by your body. The second you consume alcohol, it starts producing. The problem with ETG is your body doesn't know how much alcohol you intend to consume. So whether you're going to have one sip of alcohol or 20 beers, your body is going to start producing large amounts of ETG to combat any amount of alcohol that you intend to introduce in your body so that it doesn't poison you. So you might have one bit drink and your body goes into overdrive starting to produce ETG because it doesn't know how much alcohol you're going to consume. So it stays around in your system for a long time. And ETG, it doesn't dispel as fast as just alcohol would in your system. So what they've done or what the court systems have done or people that are trying to determine if a person has consumed alcohol is started measuring not for alcohol, but for the presence of ETG in your body. ETG lasts in your body around 80 hours from the time that you consume alcohol. Alcohol itself, is generally out of your system within 24 hours. So you can see how this extended period of time in which ETG stays in your body is an advantage to anyone trying to determine whether you've consumed alcohol or not. Now, ETG isn't a foolproof system. There's other ways that ETG can be introduced into your body aside from alcohol consumption. If you've been placed on bond or you are serving a sentence out on a crime and the monitoring agency has determined through an ETG test that they believe that you've consumed alcohol. It isn't a 100% you're going to lose your probation, you're going to be serving some sort of sentence, or you're going to be revoked off bond. You need to contact a competent criminal defense lawyer that understands how ETG works in your body and can help explain that to the court as opposed to just going in and agreeing that you had some sort of violation. If you need help with this particular type of circumstance, feel free to contact my office for a free consultation.